A huge discovery has been made in the realm of Mars exploration, as it has recently been confirmed that the ideal landing zone for the Mars colony missions will be Valles Marineris. This intriguing landscape on Mars is one of the most promising pieces of land to be colonized not just on Mars, but the entire solar system. To better understand what makes this such a favorable starting point for human expansion into space, join us as we take a look at why Valles Marineris is the perfect place to build a Mars colony. But before we do that, you first need to understand the geography of Mars. People tend to take Mars' geography for granted, oftentimes imagining it as a desolate, wastelandish version of our own planet, which couldn't be further from the truth. You see, despite being like Earth from afar, the geography of Mars is far more grandiose and has a much greater variation between high and low altitude points. For example, Mars is known for its incredibly tall and big mountain ranges and massives, most of which completely tower over even the biggest mountains of Earth. For example, the Olympus Mons mountain is around 25 kilometers tall, which is more than 2.5 of the height of Mount Everest of the Himalayans. Similarly, geographical recesses are also far greater than those found on Earth and the Valles Marineris is not just not an exception to that, but is also the prime example of what we're talking about. So, what makes the Valles Marineris so interesting? You see, Valles Marineris, which translates to Mariner's Valley, is the largest valley in the entire solar system. In fact, it is so big that you can see it in most Mars pictures, where it looks like a massive scar on the surface of the planet. The name itself, Valles Marineris, was given to it after the Mariner 9, which is the first man-made object to orbit Mars, which allowed for humans to map out the surface of Mars with high detail. This detailed observation of the planet allowed us to notice an entire network of various canyons that form what is now known as Valles Marineris. This incredible valley stretches more than 2500 miles from east to west, making it technically as long as the US. The valley is also up to 4 miles deep, making it deeper than any valley on the surface of the world, excluding underwater recesses. Furthermore, Valles Marineris also acts not only as a simple valley, but also as a buffer zone between the Tharsis region and the mountainous Chaos Terrain region. The Tharsis region is an area that is filled with volcanoes, which collectively had an extremely big mass, creating high amounts of pressure on the surface of the planet. And since Mars has no tectonic plates whatsoever, this resulted in the surface cracking like an eggshell. As a result of the pressure, Valles Marineris was created, forming a border between the volcano-filled Tharsis region and the mountainous Chaos Terrain region and represents a geographical border between them. But this still doesn't answer the question of why is Valles Marineris ideal for a human colony on Mars? You see, this March, a deeply eroded shield volcano at the meeting point of Noctis Labyrinthus and Valles Marineris, named Noctis Mons, has been discovered. This incredible mountain has been reported to have exceeded Mount Everest's height, reaching a whopping 9 kilometers vertically. Furthermore, it is also stated that it is over 450 kilometers wide. And if that wasn't enough, this volcano has also been confirmed to have been active in recent times too. Apart from this, a 5,000 square kilometer area has been found that is filled with volcanic deposits. This terrain is a field of rootless cones, which are essentially a product of lava sitting atop of body of water and ice. As a result, scientists suspect that this area used to be made of large glaciers and it is still possible that the ice resides beneath the surface of the rootless cones. With this discovery, it is certain that humans would have access 
access to water ice imminently, which means that one of the most important resources that has been deemed scarce or even non-existent on Mars will be available to us from the get-go. That said, this reserve is expected to be limited, as the remaining ice is expected to occupy space that is 3.5 miles wide at maximum, 4.5 miles long, and only a mile and a half tall. Still, this is very serviceable for the first missions before a proper water supply is established. Now, if that wasn't enough, Valis Marineris itself has been subjected to quite a bit of theories, some of which believe that the entire valley used to house water or ice at one point. If this is true, this means that the entire valley will be a perfect testing ground for scientists when it comes down to searching for the hypothetical remnants of life on Mars. Finally, and probably most importantly, Valis Marineris offers a very natural shelter to humans, as remaining close to the walls of the valley would shelter humans from the constant storms. Plus, we could easily build into the walls of the valley, creating quasi-caves that would provide even better cover, while also being much easier from a logistical standpoint to build and expand safely. So, on that bombshell, it's time for us to answer the most aching question, and that is, when can we expect the first missions to happen? Well, you'd be glad to hear that the first colonization missions might happen much earlier than anticipated. You see, because of this new revelation concerning the possible ice pockets below Valles Marineris, we now have an all but confirmed designated landing zone, which was initially one of the most problematic parts of creating a Mars colony due to our lack of knowledge of the planet. Now, however, the initial search and exploration plans that were initially planned to be remote only have been practically made obsolete, and as soon as we can, we will be able to send the first real human exploration team to Mars. However, there is still quite a bit of time left before we can send such teams, as we still have an issue of transporting people to Mars. At the current, the SpaceX Starship is yet to be fully developed, and it is still waiting on its fourth launch. We can surely expect the Starship's development to take a few years at least before we can even think of going to Mars with it. Apart from this, NASA is currently mostly focused on the Artemis program, which plans on creating the first lunar base ever, and it will also automatically serve as a testing point for creating such structures. This base is expected to start construction in 2028, with further expansion being done by the end of the first half of the 2030s. As a result, we expect the first Martian structures and the basis of the Mars colony to be established somewhere around 2040, and a full-on colony to be developed from there in the upcoming decades. All in all, we are much closer to completely colonizing our solar system than what was initially expected.